Okay. Um, well, if you're here, you definitely want to know about how to properly build a build blockchain, uh, a blockchain-based distributed application. Generally speaking, um, this is a good place to be because evangelists would come here to, you know, in the right setting, but and that would be typically um, forward-looking, aspirational, etc. We are here to be a little less aspirational and uh, forward-looking, a little more retrospective and rearward-looking, to discuss our experience in actually things that have worked well, things that haven't worked well, and what did we end up building as a um, set of capability, a framework to help businesses, to help companies construct distributed solutions that are realistic, that are uh, functional, that will work in the real world production and scalable environment. So it's not aspirational, but hopefully it's practical. Um, I was talking downstairs to somebody and say, imagine somebody standing up here and talking about how TCP IP will change the world <laughs> or SQL will heal a disease. Okay. And yet that's what happens with blockchain today. People talk about blockchain as some kind of a magical wand that you can wave and somehow it's going to do all of these magical things. Yet blockchain distributed ledger is much closer to TCP IP and SQL and such utilities and tools than anything else. And that, when, when we finally get to a point where people start talking about blockchain in the terms of that they do as tools such as TCP IP and such as SQL, we know we have reached the point of realistic use of this technology uh, and proper and appropriate functional use of this technology for enterprise purposes. What I'd like to cover today, and I will turn it over to uh, our team members who built the framework, is uh, we will ask Andrian to actually cover the components and experience of building a framework and why we believe, generally speaking, those components are a minimum must if you're going to build distributed applications. And then we will ask Alex, where is Alex? There he is up there, different Alex. <laughs> but this Alex is always willing to talk as well. <laughs> um, to touch on some of the use cases. And um, we will take some Q&A if there are any left over at that point. We're starting a little late, so we'll try to get through it in time as scheduled. So without further ado, Andrian, please, it's your, your floor. Yeah, thank you, Yuri. Thank you, everyone, everyone for coming. And um, what I'm going to talk today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the work and the framework which, which our company is, uh, is implementing. Uh, but before talking to about the uh, architecture of our framework, I would like to, to, uh, to show you the picture how we started, how, how this story started. Before, uh, a few years ago, be before starting to investigating and before starting the real implementation of the framework, we needed to understand uh, what actually blockchain technology is. We needed to understand advantages, advantages and disadvantages of the technology. The main advantages uh, are, are quite obvious. It is decentralization and uh, it is no censorship. It is trustless environment but uh, we needed to understand what, what we should pay for these advantages. And uh, actually blockchain technology has a lot of, a lot of challenges which you need to, to, to deal with. Um, actually, can anybody say the disadvantages of the technology, of the blockchain technology? Low latency, okay. Do you, do you know more? It's slow, okay. Something else? Mm, 
not exactly. Scalability, perfect, very good. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of myths, there were a lot of myths about technology. I've heard a lot of time that such a phrase is let, that we'll put everything into blockchain. We will put our data into blockchain, we'll put everything in it because blockchain it is immutable and our data will never be lost. We will calculate everything with blockchain. Um, the blockchain will check everything, the smart contract we go, will go there, we'll go there, we'll check and then do the, and do, do the work. No, it is not, it, it appeared to, 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 it is not true about the technology. Um, and actually the, the first, uh, the main disadvantage, the first disadvantage that we uh, came across technology is that it is expensive. I did uh, uh, a small investigation a few, a few days ago about the current prices to store uh, one kilobyte of, kilobyte of data into Ethereum public blockchain and it appeared to be seven dollars for one kilobyte. The same story is for Bitcoin. Yes, if you use, uh, if you use private permission and blockchain, uh, you can decrease these costs because there is no cryptocurrency, but you will still pay with your computational resources because the data is replicated across all the network and the same process, uh, the same calculation is done for each and every transaction that, that, uh, that is there. So you will still pay for it. And if you try, in, if you'll try to, to put a huge data onto blockchain, you will, uh, you will see that it is likely to be impossible. So you, win, you need to, to solve this kind of task in another way. For example, you can use traditional database, store your data there, and just, you, uh, just store a hash of this data into blockchain. And it is enough, uh, it is enough to reach immutability in this data if the, if the big size data is properly replicated in a decentralized way. The next, the next challenge is that transaction commit time is slow. For public blockchain like Ethereum, it is 15 seconds. For Bitco Bitcoin, it, it is even a lot more, it's 10 minutes. And you can reach, you can decrease this, this time for when you use permission in blockchain, but still you will not, you will not be able to reach speed for each transaction less than uh, several seconds. It is due to restrictions of the network protocols. You, you need to reach consensus for each and every transaction. That means that you need to have deferred work for each transaction that you do on the, uh, uh, in, with the blockchain. For example, we had a use case when we tried to transfer uh, a small, uh, small pieces of data via blockchain for one specific use case. And uh, our, test blocks, uh, our test environment was uh, generated uh, blockchain blocks each second. But uh, there was a communication between peers which, which needed to, uh, to transfer their data several times. If I'm not mistaken, it, it was four times uh, in each direction. And uh, the whole process was completed in about one or two minutes. So you need specific, you cannot reach, uh, solve these tasks with blockchain technology only. You need something like uh, to deal with a queue of tasks. You need, you need to use other technologies like, like message brokers for, the, for this. Uh, decision making process in the network is quite slow. Because there are, uh, there, there are um, this, uh, some types of decisions that can be, can be done only in democratic way, only in decentralized way. For example, if you need to change the version of your smart contracts, ch change the version of your core logic, you cannot do it by the, via the central administrator. You need to agree it, uh, get each and every each and every member of the network, you need to, to get agreement. And uh, as far as it is agreement, it is usually it is voting, then this, this, takes, this process takes, uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, 
this should be done with, uh, with appropriate processes. Incentivization uh, of blockchain network should be well thought out because this network has no single point of control. That is why uh, we have a tragedy, tragedy of commons here because it, it is a shared, shared resource. For example, one of, the, one of the members of the network can consume a lot of resources, as it, as it is depicted here. Uh, the member can consume, uh, one of uh, the members can consume ten, 10 transactions per second. Some of the member does not consume at all. This can happen, for example, if some of, some of the members would like to have DDoS type of attack, just, uh, just flood in the blockchain with a lot of fake transactions, and the blockchain network will stuck in that case. In public blockchain, it is, it, us it is usually solved via a small transaction fee for each and every, uh, each and every transaction. But if you do it with a permissioned blockchain, you need to solve it on your own, on your own because, because you don't have native, native cryptocurrency. And uh, in general, blockchain technology is, is quite new, and uh, we, have no, uh, we have no enough experience in the world uh, of using blockchain in enterprise area. So we don't know which, which type of blockchain is better, it should be used better for each case. And uh, that is why we are trying to build our framework to be pluggable and uh, to use any type of blockchain. So this is the main principle that we figure out. Blockchain should be used, can be used for decentralization, but no, no more than that because of all of these restrictions. This is the architecture of um, a single node. So what, we are try what can be built with our framework, we can build a network of, uh, of companies, network for companies, and each of the companies will, will have this stack of, of technologies in a single node. As you can see, uh, except the blockchain peer itself, you can see, uh, you can see traditional database you can see message broker, which is RabbitMQ. Uh, you can see cryptographic key management. It can be it can be useful if you need uh, to have compliant cryptographic storage. It is just an example. How can it be? Because the low layer, low low, low layer uh, is pluggable. You can you can add additional additional types of blockchain, for example, at the low layer. If you can use uh, uh, permissioned blockchains as well as public blockchains. You can add, uh, for example, you, you can use permission blockchain to store, to store some specific metadata which you, uh, which you don't need to, to share with, with the outer world, which you need to share only with your partners. And you can, use, uh, you can additionally uh, use separate, separate module at the low layer, uh, which will be connected to the public blockchain. And you can use it uh, to, for payment, for example, via cryptocurrency. Uh, we, have, uh, we have high level APIs here, and uh, with this high level APIs layer, it is possible for developers and for companies to, to implement business logic and uh, do it in a fast and efficient way because all the complexity of, the, of all the underlying, underlying layers is, is hidden. And uh, we already have uh, several integrations with real, uh, real partners, and we are implementing business logic with this specific layer. So an example of communication of two companies can look like this. The companies have common blockchain network. It can be public blockchain. It can, it can be permissioned blockchain. Uh, and uh, the data, the data transfer is, can be done uh, via direct peer-to-peer -peer communication between company nodes. So in that way, we can avoid uh, all the restrictions that are there with blockchain. We do not put, we do not transfer data via blockchain. We do not uh, use it to store huge data. 
because the data itself can be stored in a traditional database, which is MongoDB, for example. And as soon as this data should be sh can be shared or should be shared to another company, you can, uh, you can write a specific logic to, sh to share it. Um, but uh, um, in addition to using complementary technologies to blockchain, we were thinking about the support for blockchain management because it is very, it is, it is really, uh, really uh, a big problem uh, to manage blockchain networks. You should think about a lot of way from DevOps, DevOps uh, point of view. And we have uh, specific, uh, we have support of this process via automatic DevOps, uh, DevOps tools, via automatic scripts. And the onboarding process, the process when you need to add additional pa partner or remove additional partner from the network is done almost automatically. You don't need to know anything about underlying technology. You don't need even to know anything. You don't need even to be an expert or a developer. It is seamless. Um, I think this is it re re uh, related to architecture. We have um, uh, the current the current stage of our framework is is a beta version. We are ready for for real integrations, but we have plans for the future. Uh, the primary, the primary option for blockchain is the Ethereum-based network. Currently, we use proof of authority type of blockchain, um, but we can easily migrate to public Ethereum blockchain. We have plans to, uh, in our roadmap, to implement other types of blockchain, maybe Hyperledger, maybe Exonum or NAM uh, blockchain frameworks. We need to uh, complete performance and stress, uh, stress testing with different types of blockchain. Uh, we need to implement uh, BPNN. Uh, it is a business process and notation, uh, notation tool. Uh, we are going to implement it on top of business logic. And with the tool, it is possible to use graphical, to graphical tools to, to work with and to create this business logic. Uh, uh, versioning system of smart contracts, data man management service, which is a central service, should be completed as well. It is on our roadmap, and uh, we have uh, we have plans to to investigate and to implement decentralized storage modules in our stack. I think uh, decentralization it will uh, add additional additional possibilities in terms of de decentralization. Yeah, this is it. Do you have any questions? Yeah, please. Thank you, Andrian. Alex, can you share with us some product uh, management experience? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do not, because we do not have proof of work as a primary option. We, I think uh, this, this problem will not appear in most of the cases. Uh, first of all, our first, our first option is to use proof of authority, uh, Ethereum consensus protocol. So we, there is no such type, there is the such type of attack still is possible if more than 51% of members will agree to, to fake the network. But if more than 51 will agree, you cannot 
do anything here. But it is not the case. It is not the case for for many networks. The the num the numbers that you that you mentioned is not the case. Yeah. That can be the case. We are building a framework. If you need for your use case to to have more than one blockchain uh, network in the stack, it can be done. So, for example, if if you need to to transfer data from Ethereum to Hyperledger, for example, that can be done if that is you, the use case. If you remember the picture, there was a layer of APIs. It was the, the second from the bottom. Yeah, we need, we need to put some investigation for specific type of blockchain. We need to implement API. And the higher level, if you remember, will be unified. A program, a program, yeah. Maybe, but there are uh, there are specific type of operation. For example, put a hash onto blockchain, vote for some decision. It can be done. I'm sure that can be done with any type of blockchain. Just. It is already done. It is possible to, to access the lower. If you need a more granular control, you can as access a lower, a lower uh, low level of APIs and do what you need. Good question. We have a basic logic when, first of all, each of the members which is onboarded has, is written into specific smart contract. So no one from these specific members can make any transactions. And uh, as far as 
if anyone would like to play not by, by the rules, it is, as far as blockchain is transparent, you can see it right away, instantly. And uh, uh, if you remember, there is offboarding process. Uh, according to our custom, uh, our default logic, this uh, misbehaving party can be offboarded by collaborative decision. So it's, it's quite easy to, to implement. Actually, not only API layer, but uh, the whole core logic is, is done with Node.js Node technology, Node.js language. We chose this language because it's quite uh, widespread technology, widespread language. And it appeared to be good good choice because before that we uh, we, ha we had intention to use other technology. I will not say which one. Thanks, Andrian. And guys, let's give it up for Adrian for his awesome talk. And actually for the tremendous jobs that Adrian and the team has made in order to make this thing happen. And actually in order to empower us in Provectus in the product management division to be able to dream big and uh, actually to work closely with our partners and customers on addressing their issues with help of decentralization and blockchain. And today, like in nearest 10 minutes, I'd like to walk you through three pretty different cases where our framework and the technologies can be used. And they have one thing in common, framework for sure, and one more thing, which is the digital world, which is the personal digital world, which is owned either by the client, the individual, or the organization, or by the community, so by some entity. So for instance, let me start from one case, which is about the things we hear in news which is about journalists and their work is in military zones and non-democratic societies. So we know that there is a problem of journalists working in so such zones, trying to do their job that they intend to, but they're being found because they're not anonymous and they're being put in jail, killed, etc. And uh, there is a and we, we, our partners were searching for the solution how to address this issue. How to address the issue of allowing them to post and to get money for this. And we have come up with the solution of providing those journalists with their personal digital world where they can post and put their articles. And with the tools, which are made into the world using the modular structure of the framework, they can not only store it and not only can unanimously send it to newspapers, local newspapers, local media, and uh, international ones, but get paid for that. Because maybe there were options, you know, to unanimously send the tip about something, but you could never get the credit for this. You could never get the money for this. So it was never working, and uh, democratic journalism was not really possible in those zones. So digital world, personal digital world, with security, with functionality inside, can handle it, and we hope that it will be released and will be changing the landscape of the countries and of the news we know about. Yeah, that are, let's give it up for them because that's a very important thing. One more thing which we are thinking, it's about the user, putting user in the current business models and ecosystem in the middle, 
not the enterprises like now, but the user, and getting control of the data back to the user. So what we're thinking, we were dreaming that just an individual can have its, his own digital world, which has his all data, his personal data, his data about usage of his driving records, about usage, his medical uh, records, all kind of e-commerce records. And having all these records under control, we help the user to have them and monetize them, and we help the enterprises to comply with all these government regulations. So this is a basically a win-win solution. And keeping in mind that our architecture is modular, and those modules can easily interact with the world, we can provide those users with the ability to, for example, to send their data unanimously Let's say to insurance companies, they say they are medical records, they're saying they're finance records, they're sending their driving records, and they get the best possible quotes for insurance because the insurance companies they just know everything about this person and can actually decrease the risks and, may, and, and help the data profit the individual. So the data becomes a really digital asset. And the third thing is actually about not individual, but the organizations. Organizations may have their digital vaults as well. And let me show you the example. Let's say we have a customer, this is a real case. Uh, we have a marketplace where on the first side, there are tax consultants which have SMBs and big enterprises to work out their tax reports. And we all know that to get the tax report, you as a company, you should give very sensitive information where your revenues coming on, what are your plans, who are your owners, all the things which you don't want to share with anybody actually. And that's why some companies, they hire big departments of people who are working like one month in a year, but getting paid 12 months in a year, just like not a perfect mathematics for the enterprise. That's why we have come up with the idea. What if we say to them, you keep your data in your digital world, and those tax consultants just work with the data in your digital world, and they cannot get it to themselves. And the awesome thing is that they actually have this uh, candy here, that not only is it tax consultant can get this information, but the marketplace, they don't have access there because it's all decentralization and it's control over the data for the organization or individual in the core. So again, the concept of digital world, keeping the data, having the modules which help you to communicate with the world. It's in the core of all these cases which we can empower with decentralized technologies, with blockchain, and we can accomplish them quicker and a more efficient way if used with our Provictus blockchain framework. Thank you. Any questions, guys? And one more thing, if you can, you have some ideas of the business models like this. You are really, we appreciate if you just text us, give us a word, because we think that blockchain problem is in tech, maybe, and we're trying to fix it, but it's even more in how it can be used not in 10 years or 100 years when we're apparently all dead, but now in the current enterprises, in the companies which are funded now or will be founded next month.